In this second example on compass directions, I want to include one of those directions that is exactly halfway between two of the main compass points. In this example, I've chosen southwest. I've taken the liberty of preparing the diagram in advance. A yacht starts at a harbour marked H and travels 25 kilometres southwest. I've marked that line in with its length. It then turns towards the east and sails 29 kilometres to a point A where it anchors. The question is asking us what is now at anchorage, the distance from H, and in what direction would a rescue helicopter have to fly from the harbour in order to reach the yacht as quickly as possible? I've anticipated that the direction HA is one whose length we will need to find, so I've marked that as X. There's one other piece of information we can put in on this diagram, and it's connected with that direction southwest. Remember that southwest is exactly halfway between south and west, so it makes an angle of 45 degrees with the north-south and, in this case, with the east-west axes. That means I'm able to mark in the angle 45 degrees as shown. This example is now a classic case for use of the cosine rule. We have two known sides and a known angle between the two sides. And the thing we want to find is the length opposite the known angle, x. The cosine rule in this example tells me that x squared is 25 squared plus 29 squared. That would be Pythagoras rule, except that this is not a right angle triangle. So we have to add on a correction term that adjusts for a non-right angle triangle. In our example, the appropriate correction term is to subtract 2 times 25 times 29 times cos 45. I've done the arithmetic here on a calculator and that gives me x squared equals 440.695 correct to three places of decimal. We now take the square root and we have our value of x 20.99 kilometers correct to two decimal places. Now what was the other thing we had to find? Ah yes, it was the angle from H towards A. The trouble here is that we don't have a right angle triangle staring us in the face. In examples like this, we have to look for right angle triangles that we can construct ourselves for convenience. In this case, it turns out the right thing to do is to drop a vertical line down from H to meet the 29 kilometer arrow that runs into A. If we drop that down vertically from H, then we will have a right angle triangle. So here's our diagram again, with now the length HA marked on because we found out what that was, and the right angle triangle drawn. I've also put in two angle names. The angle we would like to find is theta. It turns out it'll be easier to find phi first. We can then use theta equals 90 minus phi to get theta. To find phi, we can recognize that it is not only in the right angle triangle, but also in the larger triangle involving H, A and the 45 degree angle. Once we recognize that, we can use the sine rule in the larger triangle. We have sine phi divided by its opposite side, that's 25, is equal to sine 45 divided by its opposite, that's 20.99. Rearranging, we have sine phi equals 25 sine 45 degrees over 20.99. Now all we have to do is take the inverse sine and we have our angle phi. It turns out to be 37.56 degrees 
correct to two decimal places. With a value for phi, we can now get theta. Theta is 90 minus 37.56. That's equal to 52.44. Degrees, and that's the angle theta. We haven't quite finished though. Just as in our first compass example, it's not enough just to give the angle, we have to actually describe the direction. We can do that in several ways, you remember. One of those ways is to describe the true direction. Look at the following diagram. It's just a small piece of the diagram we had before. I've marked in theta and the point H with the north-south axis running through H. Hopefully you believe that 180 minus 52.44 is the angle shown in red. That comes to 127.56 degrees. That is the true direction because it's measured clockwise from north. Alternatively, if we don't want to do that calculation, we can describe the direction as 52.44 degrees towards the east from south. Or alternatively, south 52.44 degrees east. I hope you can tell the difference between my s's and 5's. I sometimes falter because my s looks like 5 and I confuse myself. Anyway, that's south 52.44 east. I want to finish off by doing the calculation to convert this to degrees, minutes and seconds. We'll take the 127.56 true. That's 127 degrees and the 0.56 has to be multiplied by 60 to get the number of minutes. Doing that calculation we get 33.6 minutes. Now the point 6 has to be multiplied again by 60 to make 36 and that's the number of seconds. So that's the exact true measurement. Having said that though, because I've rounded to two decimal places, the chances are that those seconds are not exactly right. It's probably right within about 5 or 6 seconds in each direction. That concludes my presentation.